warm welcome to all of you tuning in from Facebook Live and for those of you tuning in on Brand Plus TV. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to another episode of Lunch Guide. I am your host, Chef Andy, and as I mentioned, today we are going to be making some beef and some vegetable samosas. And just to start off the show, I'm going to proceed to introduce the ingredients we'll be working with today, just to give you an idea of what to expect. So from the very front, I've got one large and one medium-sized red onion. I've also got some lean beef mince, about 200 grams. I've also got some chopped carrots there, about three large pieces. Nice big handful there of fresh coriander. I'm also going to be using very, about a handful of some cooked uh, noodles, about one cup of some frozen peas, some chopped up potatoes, some finely chopped onion, and some green chili. I'm also going to be incorporating to that some paprika powder, some ginger, some cumin, and some curry powder. You're also going to require about two tablespoons of butter, some salt and pepper for seasoning, some oil for cooking, of course, some water which you're going to be making your dough with and of course about two cups of flour and of course some flour for dusting we're going to take a short break now giving you a bit of time to settle down and grab your pens and papers if you're taking notes and we'll see you after a short one Welcome back viewers, thank you once again for tuning in. I'm going to begin this very, very simple two dishes with uh, a very, very simple beginner. So first off, begin by heating up both of your pans. And now to start us off, we're going to start by browning our meat. So I'm going to proceed to add a very small dash of oil to the pan right at the very end. Allow that to heat up very quickly. Add a bit of oil as well to your other pan. And this, for this particular reason, I'm using two separate pans. We're going to be doing the meat filling in one and we're going to do the vegetable one in the other. But till our pans reheat, we're going to proceed to chop some red onion. to cut right across proceed to chop as fine as possible Once you've got one whole red onion chopped, proceed to begin by adding your meat to your first pan. And at this stage, we're going to continue frying our meat on the pan, making sure to completely cook down the fat, give it a bit of color. So very, very gently begin by mixing everything in your pan. Using of course your spoon or your wooden spoon to break up the chunks of meat. Continue frying your mixture. Making sure of course to continue mixing to allow for an even consistency of cooking. And once mixed through very quickly, allow to continue browning. No. While that continues, sorry for that, while that continues, we're going to get the other pan hot and ready. Be sure to move it around, coat your pan completely with some oil and proceed to add your red onions. To that, also add 
about a half a teaspoon of some minced ginger. Begin to mix that through. And also very, very important to make sure not to add too much oil. Remember, you're only just really bringing these ingredients together. You can actually be able to use olive oil or vegetable oil as well. Doesn't really matter. Right, once your onions are sweated out, proceed to add your carrots. So I'm using two large carrots for this recipe. I'm also going to add about two potatoes, medium size, chopped very, very finely. Now, very, very important to also mention when you're making a filling for samosas, very important to actually try and make sure that most of the ingredients are almost the same or exactly the same size. This will allow for consistency right through to the cooking and it also give a nice beautiful appearance on the table. So we're going to proceed to mix that together. Of course mixing com continuously to allow for an even coloring and cooking. While that continues, I'll bring your attention back to the meat. Proceed to mix through once more. Now this particular technique of cooking meat will actually ensure two things. It will allow for a nice beautiful coloring of your meat. It will actually also allow for you to really cook down all that excess fat. Making sure that your samosas will not actually be dripping oil once they come out of the fryer much later. And also very important to mention, remember your mixture should actually be nicely flavored but should not actually be wet. Remember you can actually have a samosa exploding in the oil if you do have any particular liquid uh, wrapped up in your mixture. So be sure to actually cook it through until it's completely dry. Just proceed to toss that. And you can now turn your heat to medium. And of course, always making sure to pay attention to your pan while doing so. Now your meat is just about ready to come out. We're going to proceed to uh, lower our temperature completely to low. And while that continues, proceed to add in one or rather half, a half a large white onion chopped or one whole medium onion. You can actually also use leeks for this recipe. coming back to your potato mixture give it a nice quick toss and just once your carrots just begin to start coloring just after you get a beautiful color from your carrots proceed to add some peas I'm going to add about half a cup and that should actually give a very very good appearance and break that monotony of the orange from the carrots and the white from the onions and the potatoes. So as you can see, nice beautiful color. Remember, uh, when you're making your filling, very, very handy to remember two things. Always make sure it is actually visually applicable, visually acceptable. Make sure it is actually a nice beautiful color uh, that comes out of your dish every time. Remember, a lot of us tend to eat with our eyes, so very, very importantly to make sure that the food really stands out visually. And as well, not forgetting, make sure it actually tastes as good as it looks. So proceed to toss those together. Paying attention as well to your peas. I'm using fr uh, frozen peas for this particular recipe. 
You can actually use fresh peas, but always remember to actually cook them, or rather blanch them for a very, very short period. Take them out and allow them to cool off and then proceed to cooking. And that way you'll actually avoid for them to actually mash up when you're doing your filling. So another nice quick mix. Now just to bring your attention back to the meat, your white onion will actually begin to sweat out very, very nicely, allowing for some flavors to permeate into the meat. And once that is done, we'll proceed to turn off the temperature completely. Of course, tossing ingredients once more to mix together. And very, very quickly proceed to move your mixture to another bowl, of course, to stop it from continually cooking and also to allow for it to cool off a little faster. All right, so your meat mixture is done. Now to get through to the last and final stage, of your vegetable filling. Now one particular easy technique to check for doneness when you're doing your filling, always very handy to just take a small spoon and probably take a few of the ingredients from the pan, making sure to take a little bit of each. And using a knife, you can actually press the knife down against your chopping board just to make sure that they're actually cooked through and that they're mashing really, really softly. But also very important to remember, don't overcook your vegetables. It will actually turn into mash, which may not actually be very, very appetizing in your samosa as a filling. So proceed to keep tossing everything together. And at this stage, I'm going to proceed to add about a teaspoon of butter. This will actually allow for very good velvetiness right through the filling. And as well, it will give your filling a nice, beautiful richness. I'm using unsalted butter for this recipe. If you do decide to go with salted butter, or if you're also optionally using margarine, be very, very vigilant because it could actually over-season your food. So make sure to actually do your seasoning last if you're going to be using any particular salted butter. And that will allow for you to make sure it's not also over salted. So once the butter is in, you'll begin to notice a nice beautiful velvetiness to your ingredients. Nice beautiful shine as well. And once your knob of butter is completely consumed, we're going to proceed to season with some salt. Grind in some black pepper cones as well. And now begin to add your ingredients beginning with about half of your curry powder, small pinch of cumin powder, and last but not least a small, small pinch of paprika powder. Begin to toss once more, mixing through. And just as soon as you can get that beautiful cardamom coming through, and that beautiful cumin aroma, proceed to turn your heat off completely and proceed to add your mixture once more into a separate bowl. And this is very, very crucial, especially to make sure that your ingredients do not continue to cook. So first things first, those are done. Now we're going to proceed to allow these to cool off on the side really, really quickly. So I'm going to move those right to the end. And now we're going to proceed to make our, our dough for the, for the samosa filling, or rather for the samosa wrap. And it's a very, very simple process. For this, you will require some space. So I'm just going to make some room here on the table.
and particularly for those of you who may actually still find it quite a bit of a challenge to make your own uh, to make your own manda or your fi or your wrapper for the for the samosas you remember there is actually a few of them that a few retail stores out there that actually sell pre-made ones you can alternatively grab some of those before you try and make your own just to be able to tell the difference and you also can take the recipe from me today and actually try it on yourselves at home so next up going to clean our table really quickly always very handy to make sure you work on a clean surface and proceed to grab your flour so remember I weighed out about two cups of flour to this bowl we're also going to be using some room temperature water and of course always reserve some flour for dusting so very very easily we're going to begin by making a well right in the center of the bowl and to that proceed to add about a quarter cup of water remember very very important to add your water in small amounts to make sure you get a very beautiful consistency and proceed to fold in from the outside in using your fingertips at this stage to work through your flour allowing the water to be absorbed completely and it will actually begin to start forming some uh, lumps or rather some uh, crumbs that is actually the checkpoint you're looking for so proceed to mix once your liquid is completely consumed make a well once more and add a little bit of water once more i like to add my water in quarters to a cup it actually allows for you to get a nice beautiful gradual mix of your ingredients and now proceed to fold in once more making sure to turn your bowl around continuously that should help you to get a nice beautiful consistency and of course very very importantly as well always work your hands right through the sides or rather around the sides of your bowl making sure to incorporate everything in your bowl and also avoid waste and once your liquid is consumed completely once more proceed to add just a little more mix that through once again and by this stage you should actually be able to start getting a nice beautiful ball forming right in the center of your bowl and you can at this stage begin to knead everything together of course reconstituting that big lump of flour and using that to clean the sides of your bowl that way you, you are going to be able to reconstitute most of the flour on the sides and just using your fingertips as well you could use your fingers to or your uh, the back of your nails to actually just rub out any particular bits of flour stuck to the sides of your bowl or to the bottom of the bowl and of course doing so proceed to continue kneading your dough and by this stage you should actually be able to have a nice beautiful ball of dough right at the center of your bowl so right after that you're going to proceed to avoid adding any more water and you're going to proceed to dust your hands using the palm of your hands to rub off the flour that's stuck to your hands and also be sure to rub the tops of your fingertips and right through and around more like cleaning your hands rather so remember very handy to make sure not to waste any of the flour that you weigh in here if you do actually proceed to chuck anything that you've mixed so far it will actually alter with the results so be sure to always mix everything in the bowl and avoid waste as much as possible so proceed to knead the dough
and once beautifully constituted const uh, once you have a nice beautiful constituency or rather so consistency sorry for that proceed to press the dough against the palms of your fingertips and uh, press into your palm rather making sure to squeeze out any dough any particular air pockets that are in there proceed to dust lightly knock it down a few times just uh, fold your fingers into a fist and proceed to just knock that down a few times that will also allow for you to get rid of any air and proceed to refold that back to shape and once that is done you can proceed to pour the rest of the flour right on the countertop where you'll be working making sure to rub your bowl nice and clean and you should actually be able to have a nice beautiful clean bowl at the end of the process now we're going to proceed to knead the dough right on the countertop here so very very handy a bit of flour and now you're going to proceed to uh, work your dough but very very simply begin by grabbing the frontest the farthest end from you proceed to bring it in and tuck turn the dough around proceed to grab the from the front once more pull it back and tuck and proceed to do so for maybe a minute of course making sure to consistently turn your dough And once that's done, you can proceed to roll it out lengthways, just using your hands. And right at that point, you're going to proceed to grab a small knife. You can actually also use a pizza cutter if you have one. And if you don't have one of this, proceed to just use a small knife. It will work just the same. And very, very simply proceed to portion out your dough. It may be particularly uh, a new experience for some of you to uh, um, weigh out your dough in exactly the same amounts in the first steps of cooking. So I'm going to share a very, very simple technique of getting them to be the right consistency and the right uh, quantities as well. So always proceed by cutting them up and make sure they almost resemble in size. And the only way you're going to make sure is by rolling them right over your counter and setting them aside. And this will particularly save you time, especially if you're trying to really get some even portions out. So proceed to roll them the same way, cons uh, reconstituting them into some golf size, golf shaped balls. And once that's complete, very, very simply place them right next to each other. And you should actually be able to tell the biggest ones from the small ones. Very, very simply begin to pinch off a bit of the dough from the bigger sizes. Of course, making sure to do it in very, very small amounts. That way you're going to actually be able to trim down the size very, very simply. And once you lay them right next to each other, you should actually be able to compare them very easily and you should be able to get a nice even size. Once that done, what that's done, you can roll out the remaining bit of your dough and looking at the number we have, about five pieces, so begin to split those into about five equal pieces. And you can easily just incorporate that to each piece, that way giving yourself a nice, beautiful, consistent portioning. Simple as that. Using, the palm of your the, using your palms and your thumb, proceed to roll those out on the palm of your hands bringing them back to shape. And now 
once that's done we're going to proceed to assemble these so for that you're going to require a rolling pin you are also going to require another pan remember you are going to be cooking this for a very very short while just to really uh, get that dough cooked and also to allow for them to really spread out very easily so very very simply begin by dusting top of your counter place one of the balls right in the center and begin to roll it out very very gently of course turning it sideways while you do so flip it over dust it lightly proceed to do the same and you can set that aside and proceed to do the same for the rest so very very simply dust over the top roll it out into about five to six centimeters in diameter turn and dust one small and proceed to do the same for the rest of your pieces turn once dust lightly and proceed to do the same and continue with the same same method of working right to the very end dust turn over turn to the side once and this should actually become very very easy with a bit of practice so i will actually share a little tip that actually got me to be able to do this very very simply I used to take my Saturday weekend days and, and I would actually just take a bit of time in the kitchen. I would actually do this a few times and what will happen is you will begin the process with a bit of difficulty. But remember the beauty of cooking is you will always learn something every time you go back to your kitchen. So don't be shy of failing the first time. It does take quite a bit of time to get used to. So continue to roll that out, turn once, again dust lightly and once that is done you're now ready for the next step. So we're just going to clean our surface out a bit now proceed to grab your cooking oil you can use uh, virgin olive oil or you can use vegetable oil which is much cheaper for this particular technique after that grab a spoon probably a tablespoon will do really well proceed to lay out your pieces of dough on a counter and using a tablespoon measure out one tablespoon of oil and pour over each piece right, simple as that using your same spoon proceed to spread the oil right over each sheet making sure to work your way from the center and proceed to spread out very very gently leaving about half a centimeter off the edge proceed to repeat them making sure to get a nice even coating of oil also very handy to always repeat them and go through them a few times. This will actually allow for you to make sure your oil is evenly spread and that all your sheets have exactly the same amount of oil. So at this stage you should actually just manage to coat them lightly over the top. Remember you should not put too much particularly at this stage because it will make it a little hard for you to roll this out. So once that is complete, proceed to grab your sheets one at a time laying one on top of the other making sure to try and get a nice beautiful symmetry right through to the end now once you've got four of those pieces laying right on top of each other proceed to grab the last and final one and invert that right over the top 
and very very simply use your fingertips of course while supporting your dough proceed to tuck right through the edges and once that's done turn it over once proceed to spread those as well making sure to get a nice beautiful evenness right around the sides and once that's done proceed to grab your dough hold it right up uh, vertically and now proceed to press with your palm while rotating the dough and at this stage you will actually begin to feel the dough will actually begin to get a little more thinner in thickness and now basically just use your fingers to work around your dough press right through the middle once more hold it up and proceed to do the same and once it's spread out about double in size in diameter very very gently proceed to dust over the top and right on the counter of course pushing off any excess and using your rolling pin begin to roll that out to about 30 centimeters in diameter so be sure to consistently turn over some of your sheets may actually begin to shrink while you do so so just very simply use your fingertips to stretch them out to the end using the tip of your fingers to support them now once that's done dust once more and proceed to roll that out turning continuously and dusting as well making sure to not dust too much at once spread it out as you roll of course turning continuously not forgetting to dust And at this stage you can proceed to turn on your stove allowing the pan to heat up at very low heat remember you're not going to be cooking this to cook to finish you're actually just going to use a little heat to allow for the sheets to spread out remember the heat does get through the dough and the beautiful layers that you covered in oil will allow for each sheet to spread very very easily as soon as the oil is nice and hot in there a bit of steam will form which will allow for you to get some very very beautiful sheets but another pointer to also share also make sure that when rolling this out keep a nice consistent thickness remember these are the sheets you're looking at uh, folding into samosas later so keep your consistency right through so proceed to roll out do making it as big as you possibly can with of course paying attention to make sure that you don't bruise your dough while doing so dust lightly turn over once more so this should actually give you about 9 to 10 turns while you continue to do so and it should take you a total of anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes to make your own sheets so do always make quite a bit of an arrangement to make some time to do so so i'm rolling it a little wider than 30 centimeters remember we are going to trim this so once you roll that out i'm going to show you a very very simple trick grab a nice big round plate that you have and very very simply proceed to place that right over your dough and this will actually allow for you to get some nice consistency with the sheets and of course allow for you to trim off the edges which may give you a bit of a problem so very very importantly dust your cutter very very quickly and counting about about a centimeter away from the uh, the, the sides of the plate 
begin to go right around with your pizza cutter Once that is done, proceed to lift off the trimming, set that aside, proceed to lift your plate very gently off your dough. And now your sheets are nicely trimmed to the edges, proceed to lift your sheet and place that right on your warm pan. Remember, very, very important to also pay attention at this particular stage. It is very, very easy to actually um, overcook or rather even undercook this. So very, very important for you to actually keep paying attention right through to the end of the process. I'm just going to give my pan a bit of a shake. I'm going to be using my hands to turn this over. I do recommend that if you can't handle the heat, you may actually want to use a lifter or you can actually just turn it onto the surface of the table and lift it very gently back and it should actually allow for you to get your manda to cook very, very nicely. So as soon as you begin to see those air bubbles coming through the top, I'm going to just place my hand right over, turn that once and return the sheets to the pan. And as you can see, it will actually not color so much. It should actually have some very, very small specks of brown at this stage. And one particular thing to keep checking on, check for those beautiful air pockets in there. This actually means that the sheets are actually spreading as you continue. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So we're going to proceed to do that for another four to five minutes, continuously turning and easily peeling one sheet at a time. But I will not allow for you to miss that part. So I'm going to take a break now and clean up my station. And when I do come back, I'll show you how to take those off really, really gently. I'm also going to take you through the last process of folding your samosas and last but not least, fry them and serve. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. back ladies and gentlemen for those of you who are with us just before we took the break we were doing some samosa wraps and these are now done I've also got my fillings now ready to go in and I've got also some uh, some adhesive here so this is very very easy to make uh, measure out about three tablespoons of flour and measure out one to one and one to one and a half tablespoons of water just give it a mix and it should actually consist be a very very pasty consistency and this is what you're going to be using to do your samosa. So we're going to start off by unwrapping this. Remember, very handy once you're done making your sheets, uh, proceed to, uh, to split them up and then cover them up immediately so that they don't actually dry out and become impossible to fold with. So I'm just going to take this off to show you what we did. So we're going to just use about two sheets for this recipe. Now, as I mentioned before, we took the break. Uh, once you're done rolling them out, once you're done uh, uh, heating them out on the pan, remember you do get the outer, the two outer sheets that actually cook off completely. So what you do is peel the first sheets out very, very slowly, and once you proceed you will actually get to the inner core, which will be able to give you some nice, I'll actually hold it up for you. You'll be able to get these nice, beautiful sheets. They should actually be light and preferably for some checkpoints as well. They should actually be light and they should not actually tear once you hold them up. This will actually ensure that you get a nice consistency to your samosas. And now just to proceed to the folding part, I'm going to begin by layering them one over the other and very, very simply, I'm going to cut right through the middle lengthways, fold that once into halves and proceed to slice those 
right through the middle once more and that should actually give you now about eight equal quarters so we're going to proceed to fold and fry this but before i do so we're going to proceed to heat up our oil so turn on your gas and allow for your oil to begin to heat up so very very simply Something also to mention, always have some kitchen towel or some serviettes to actually drain your samosas when they come out of the oil. Keep that very handy before you begin and preferably also hold a tongue which will actually allow for you to remove them from the oil very, very simply. So I'm going to begin the first process by folding some of the meat samosas. So I'm just going to grab one of the sheets. So that is basically one of the quarters as i mentioned very very simple technique of folding just turn that around on your board begin by folding either side to the towards the inside and almost right across to actually almost make an envelope uh, almost make an envelope shape so it do, should actually come to something like that after folding so be sure to begin by bringing one edge of the flap right to the center and proceed to grab the other end bringing in right to merge right at the center. Be always sure also to make sure that you cover the holes right at the end because those will allow for oil to seep in and they'll actually drain quite a little bit. So be sure to make sure the edges are completely tightly sealed. And once that first fold is done, grab some of your glue and proceed to spread that right through the inside of that last flap and very very lightly attach that as simple as that and then now proceed to open your flap just as i'm doing you should actually be able to hold it nice and easy at this stage hold hold open your samosa making sure that there's a nice beautiful hole right through the center and proceed to add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of course the size of your sheet will depend on how much you're filling you're going to be putting in but always be sure, probably I'll be able to show that from the cameras, be sure to get almost to the top, but be sure that you can actually put your finger right over the top and it should actually sink just a little lightly and you know you've got enough. Remember, filling it to the top will make it impossible to fold your samosa over and it may actually open up when it hits the oil. So very simply, once your filling is in, give it a nice tap on the side, allowing your mixture to fall to the the, the very very bottom and proceed to use your thumbs to fold that in by basically just tucking that in very very gently and with the last and final flap still sticking out proceed to bring that in and very very simply put a bit of your glue right over the sides of the edges of that last flap and proceed to fold making sure of course that your samosa has the shape that you're looking for the desired shape that you desired to get in the beginning and that it actually holds shape very very simply so i'm going to do about three more just for some of you to be able to see once more so once again one fold over and the other one right across a bit of glue right through the center open it up make sure to get that nice pocket proceed to add your meat filling give that a bit of a shake you can actually also press in the filling very lightly and once more press in from the from your side closest to you and proceed to fold right over finishing off by sealing the samosa And of course, once more, doing a nice thorough check by rotating it to make sure that all your corners are sealed and your samosa actually holds shape. So we're going to just drop those in the oil, allow them to continue cooking. Very important to have some good, good hot oil. Remember, cold oil will actually allow for your samosas to really sip that oil in there and they won't get the crisp. So very important to make sure your oil is hot before your samosas go in. Remember your fresh manda as well will cook very fast. So this is something you don't want to cook and leave unattended. 
It will actually color very fast in the pan as well. And at this stage, we're just going to proceed to toss them around a few times, making sure to get an even color both on the top and on the bottom. Be sure also to watch for particularities such as the flaps opening up. Remember, if your samosa opens up in the oil, it will actually leave all your filling in there. It will make your oil quite dirty and you may actually not be able to get the desired result. So just to turn those and color them a little more. And one particular good technique to doing samosas, you can actually do them in advance, throw them in the refrigerator or even freeze them. But always remember to actually pull them out in advance, allow them to come to room temperature and then throw them in the oil. That way they won't actually cause your oil to pop. Right, so our first two pieces are done. Just going to lift those and set them over our parchment paper and allow those to dry very quickly. And now we're going to proceed to do the same thing for the vegetable samosa. So for this particular one, remember we had our noodles from earlier. So all you're going to do is once your veggies are completely cooled off, proceed to give that a mix, adding in your noodles. And now proceed to fold just as you did with the rest. Begin by getting that nice beautiful triangular shape. Be sure to also glue it nice and gently right from the very tip to the end to make sure it doesn't actually open up and proceed to add your vegetable mixture of course adding in equal quantity of noodle to veg filling and as you did before proceed to tuck that in flip over and lastly proceed to seal the samosa and that goes into your oil very gently proceed to do the same for the next piece and proceed to add your filling making sure to remove any excess. And next up, proceed to fold that in once more, flip over the edge, a bit of glue to seal. And that as well, straight into the oil. So some particular tips I could share with you about the filling as well. You can actually make the same you can actually make your filling the same way when you're doing spring rolls. It will actually fill up quite well and remember also some for the ingredients we've used today. Be sure to also try your very own varieties. There's so many options out there that you can work with. I personally use this just for display, but for you at home, I always recommend try out a few new techniques every now and then. Also give the manda a try, make, try and make your sheets on your own. If you do face some difficulties, you could always write to us. We're always ready and willing to listen from you. We'll, we'll also be very ready to give you a bit of advice if you do need that extra helping hand. Now just to bring your attention back to the pot, these are nicely coloring, so I'm going to proceed to remove the first piece. Always be sure to hold it right over the pot before removing. Allow any excess oil to pour, to pour out. Also turn your samosa a few times to make sure it's not actually dripping any oil from inside. And proceed to remove and drain on the kitchen paper. Once that last piece is done, proceed to turn off your gas and allow for draining right on your sheet and that ladies and gentlemen is as easy as that can be done so I'm just going to grab a lemon right in the refrigerator so remember always a very handy tip to serve a bit of lemon with your samosa it actually brings out the beauty of the harshness of the spices 
and it also lifts it by giving it a nice beautiful acidic freshness so very very simply proceed to half your lemons place those on your plate and you can proceed to add your samosas of the veg to one side and your meat samosas to the other I'm going to thank you once again for tuning in today. I will also thank you for actually uh, watching and keeping, uh, staying tuned this far. I will also remind you that we are on Facebook. Do check out our page, plenty for you to see. Do also check out our YouTube page. There's plenty of videos we've done before, both on this show and in the previous ones. You will be able to learn so much. But from the studios and myself, I will send my warm thank you once again. Until the next episode, have a lovely one. Enjoy your lunch today and see you soon.